Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Noshi and today we're going to be starting a project that I've been putting on the back burner for a very, very, very long time. So I'm pretty much happy to introduce my old motor. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking it apart. Uh, most of it is taken apart already, but I'm going to start taking the head off. And then I'll figure out what was wrong with the motor in the first place. So once I figure out what's going on with it, then I can go ahead and start the build process for it. Ordering the parts, doing my research, things of that nature. So as you can see, the valve cover is pretty much loosened up already. The injectors are gone. The spark plugs are also gone. So all I gotta do pretty much is just lift this up and take this piece off right here. And then you can see the bottom end of the cover. But pretty much if you're gonna do this, you're just gonna go ahead and just take all that stuff out. All right, and there we go, the exposed motor. So I got the crank bolts loose with a 5.8, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking these off and then I can go ahead and get these two bolts right here. So the bag is labeled and now I'm gonna go ahead and take the exhaust side out. We include in the plates and then take off the intake side, put it in this plate and put it in almost separate bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the, pretty much loosen these two bolts right here. I think they're E8s. I'm gonna take those two off to get this guide bracket off so that I can get these loosened and take the Venus unit out off the intake and the exhaust side. All right, so I'm gonna take the tensioner off the timing chain. So I didn't have the right socket for this. So I went ahead and just got one of these um, wrenches and it's not on tight so you might be able to get it with anything and just turn it all right so it's loose right now so and this is your and this is the time intentioner Let's see. so i'm just going to stick it back in and just have it threaded in a little bit so i'm not going to fully take it out so i used the e10 socket and went ahead and took off all the cam ledge bolts so took them all off put them inside of a bag. So now I could go ahead and take this off. So I have the intake venous unit removed. And as you can see at the bottom is E-I-N-I-N. At the bottom it says in for intake. So on this one, it also says E-X for exhaust. So you can't really mix these up at all. So pop that off and yeah, the whole camshaft is exposed. I don't see anything bad or anything with it right now so yeah i'm gonna keep on going and see how it goes so far the head is looking pretty good uh the only thing i see right there is a bug i don't know where the heck he came from so i'm gonna start taking off the exhaust side camshaft assembly plus the venos unit but uh yeah so far it looks pretty good for an engine that's been sitting around i have a little bit of like rust or something all right, so the Venos units are completely out now. I got both both of them out. But one thing to note is if you ever, when you're trying to take the Venos unit off and it's stuck, just give it like a light tap with a, like a rubber mallet or something and it'll pretty much start to wiggle itself loose. So this is weird. I found a piece of, what is this? Plastic, what well, seemed like valve cover material. So a little like piece of that fell into the engine, but ironically it's on cylinder three. That's the side that was having the mis constant misfires. It wouldn't stop misfiring. So I'm pretty much ready to take the head off, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the accessory parts that are still on the motor, not on the motor, but on the head. So I'm gonna take off the oil filter housing gasket, which is bam, bam, and that bolt. And then, Afterwards, the veno solenoids exhaust and intake over here, and pretty much bag this up also. The tensioner pulley, not a tensioner pulley, but a tensioner bolt. So take that off, and yeah, that should be it. So I have all the pieces off. The oil filter housing is off. The oil temp coolant temp sensors are off. The veno solenoids are off, and I was thinking if I should go ahead and remove the studs for the intake side and i still got let me see one more right here that i need to take off it broke while i was removing it 
So I think I might just leave those on and just take them off later. But I'm gonna start taking off the head right now. And this thing, pretty much I'm using the top handle of an old uh, jack that I had. I'm gonna go ahead and use that to use as a breaker bar on this half drive. And the torque size on this is a T60. So I'm gonna go through each one of those and take them all apart. And I think also right here, these after remove also, those are a size smaller. Okay, so I have the big bolts out right now. So all I have to do is go ahead and take out these smaller ones right here. So there's one on each end, like two here, and then two over on this side right here. So same premise, breaker bar, and what socket is this? This is a T50. So T50 is on the edges, on the outside edges. So all the other bolts are removed right now. So all I have to do is use an E12 socket and take off the bolt that's hidden down here, right here, and this one right here. And after that, should be able to lift the head right up. So the hardest part of this whole process so far has been getting to that bolt that's down here. So I, there's a, I don't know what to call this, but it's sticking out right here and it holds the chain guide in place. So I had to remove that and then I was able to go ahead and get that bolt out down there. So the way I did it was I went ahead and moved this as far as I could to the left. Then I used a channel lock, clamped it on and turned it uh, to get it loose. So the main thing is not really on that tight and I could finger, I could use my finger and remove it back. Also, I forgot one more bolt, which is right here. So once I take that off, then I should be able to lift this thing off. So I pried the edges of the head and as you can see, it's like lifted up. You clearly see it right here. So I just used the rubber mallet and just knocked up on each corner and it came up pretty easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to lift this off and yeah, put it on. So I need to take this bolt off right here, which is hooked up to the fuel line. So once I take it off, then I can remove the head. So anytime you're sitting there and you're trying to lift it up and it's not, it's loose, but it's not coming up all the way, nice and free, then check around because most likely it's still stuck on something. This is the cylinder head off right now. And as you can see, like water or something came in cylinder five and three looks a little bit murky too. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pretty much try to clean up this whole block right here, especially five. So I did some light cleaning on top of them and it doesn't look too bad so far. But the only one that looks really bad is the one that had zero compression, which was cylinder three. It had some like speckling on top, so I'm assuming that's from when the, this particular injector failed. So, so the reason why it has all these rust spots inside is because it looked like water got inside the motor because my motor was outside for like a good week while I was away in California. So yeah, when I got back, put it back inside and yeah. So I just got to clean this up. I do a lot of cleaning to it. So most likely when it get hot tanked and all that, it'll be much clean again. So. So in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the bottom end of the engine. So that way I can see if I can find any other issues that might be needed to be addressed when I'm rebuilding this motor. So actually built motor. So after I'm done with that, then I can go ahead and get my parts list together and all the good stuff. So, so far the only bad thing I see is the pistons definitely have to be replaced, which I was gonna replace anyway. And yeah, so like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.